All right, guys. <clears throat> Welcome back for more drawing 101 stuff. Today we're going to work on the linear perspective. All right. L I N E A R perspective is P E R S P E C T I V E. One more time linear L I N E A R perspective is P E R S P E C T I V E. Okay. All right, linear perspective. This is our outdoor landscape model for everything that we draw when we're dealing with outdoor perspective or outdoor design. So, first things first, blank piece of paper. Typically, we can do this on the horizontal instead of the vertical. I'm doing it on the vertical just so we can go ahead and do our setup for our basic stuff. All right, in the middle of the page, going from left to right, do the horizon line. That's what this line is right here. So left to right, just a simple line going from side to side. Don't want to make it too dark because we can add detail or stuff on top of it later just so we have something down. All right, I do want you to label it, though. As I said before, this is going to be just an outline, so we're not putting a major amount of detail. We're just adding a or just a how-to blueprint so you know what this thing is. All right, the horizon line. That's what this line is from one side to another. In the middle of that line, I'm going to put a dot, okay? From that dot, do one more arrow, and this is called the vanishing point. I'll hold this up so we can all read it really, real simply. The horizon line and the vanishing point. Now, the horizon line is where the sky touches the ground. All right. If you're standing outside, out at the beach, looking out at the ocean, the horizon line is the imaginary line or the line that visibly you can see. That is where the ocean is touching the sky out in the extreme distance. All right. Now, from the vanishing point, we're going to do two diagonal lines going down south. One. Two. Make sure you're sketching out your lines. You're not doing solid lines. Sketch them out. That is one of those key things that I'm trying to instill with you. All right. After we got a little road down there, we're going to do some mountains to show atmospheric space so that we can see that there is a distance that we have our road here, mountains in the background to help fill in the open space. Now on the mountains, watch how I'm doing them. Going up, take a bend, come south. No fewer than three, no more than seven. Don't want to make it look like a massive, weird, crazy mountain range. And one thing I do want you guys to take part in knowing is that when I did my mountains, notice how there's some space that I left, some open space in between each of the mountains. This way I can come back and either I can add fog or I can add some sort of uh, additional items up there so that I have that space because as I'm drawing in pen, I can't erase it. Just want to make sure that everything is covered. All right, next point. All right, let's go down to our three levels. Okay. On the right, oh, sorry, your left side of your paper, up here we have our horizon line. On the, on the left side of the paper, we're going to do three words. All right. This is going to be our labeling for where items are to go in the drawing. Back here in the back, which is closest to the vanishing point, this is our background. Things that are located in the middle. This is this is the middle ground. And things that are located here in the front is the it's not front ground because I know about four people in the room are thinking about it, and either two of you have said it to one another. It's not the front ground, it is the foreground, F-O-R-E ground. Because front ground just sounds weird. Alright, so foreground. F-O-R-E, ground, middle ground, M-I-L-D-D-L-E, and background, B-A-C-K, ground. Okay. Now, a couple things we do need to go over real quick. All right. The sun. All right, let's talk about the sun real quick. All right, usually a sun is this little thing that sits up in the sky, has some lines come around. Some people even put a smiley face on it. That's a sun. We all know what that is. Now we got to talk about middle schoolers. Now my middle schoolers, 
I'll grab a fresh one. Middle schoolers need to know that you are evolved. You are no longer in, el in elementary school. So I'm going to draw a couple of these real quick. You just need to watch. You do not need a copy. However, you do need to know what this is. All right. So we got the mountain range over the side there. If on your paper you do one of these. What's that? A sun. That's what most of you are saying. Here's the thing with the sun. The sun is not in the corner of the sky. Right now, is the sun up or down? Up, because it's daylight outside. If you never draw this again, that's fine. Today, you're going to draw a sun. However, you're not going to do this sun, because if I see this sun, it's going to come out of your paper. Don't do that. Now, moving on to our no another example. This landscape, this landscape here, we're going to put the sun over the mountains. Or we could set it up here in the sky, like this. These are natural, these are normal. I know it looks like mountains, let's make it a little more round. Okay. These are normal things. Why? Because this stuff exists in nature. I can go outside and I can see the mountain, the sun setting behind something. Or I can go outside and I can see the sun sitting up here in the sky. But if the sky is blue and the grass is green, I know that it's daytime. If this is dark, like a purple or a black, and down here we have a dark green or uh, bluish green grass, I'm assuming that it's nighttime. I don't need to see one of these. However, I do want you to know how to illustrate them properly. All right, let's go over the next thing. What's that? Some of you are thinking that's a cloud. Some of you are saying, oh, that's how I do my clouds. Mr. G, can I also do my clouds like this? Okay, two things. One, this is not a cloud. This is a sheep. that is sitting up in your sky, which makes no sense. This, this can be a cloud, however, I'm gonna resist a strong urge to come by and do this, because they look like the Mario clouds that you see in Mario, okay? For the clouds that I want you to produce, you're doing this. All my pen is doing is going from left to right, just like this. All I want you to do is the exact same thing, except you're gonna arc it around to create a, a, sky, a cloud shape. Copy this onto your paper, Now we have actual atmosphere clouds. The closer you make the lines together, if you can make them small and um, make them make the lines tight together, like this, it does look a lot better for time's sake. I'm just doing it roughly, just so you guys can get the basic shape. Give you guys a couple seconds to copy that down, and then we're moving on. All right, switching it back to make sure that you got a couple clouds. Located in the top up here in the sky for yourself. You can tuck the sun behind the clouds. Perfectly fine. We see that out in nature. Think about what exists in the sky right now. We can tuck the sun back here. Just like that mountain setting. All right. Now, this is your light source. So the light is coming in this direction. So when we put in a few shapes down here to show uh, our atmospheric space, make sure that you're corresponding to the correct light. All right. Square. Triangle. Circle. Light's coming from this way. So if I was to shade this, I'm going to shade the beard. Color in the oval. Might want to make it come back this way a little more. There's my circle, my sphere. Bring a little more up on this side. Throw a line down, there's my pyramid. Match the shape, color it in. Boom. Last one, my cube. Dock it back, one, two, three. Connect, one, two. Match the shape. Good to go. Now the one last thing I want to mention is this. All my lines are going towards the vanishing point. If your lines are not going towards the vanishing point, you are going to have a jacked up linear perspective, so make sure you got it covered. Later.